while HyperDocs kind of focused on letting students have a voice in the pace, the place, and the time, and sometimes the path, choice boards, on the other hand, let students have more of a voice in a saying in the path that they choose. Choice boards are a little bit more simpler than HyperDocs. It does not need to be a whole entire learning cycle, although it could, but it's basically a graphic organizers that allow students to move at their own pace and have choice over what they learn or how they interact with the content lesson or even how they assess. So here's a few different examples and you can make copies of any of these templates. Team DLS has put on great um, PDs in the past with choice boards. I know that I've seen what they've sent out or um, they've linked to their website. So please take advantage of that as well. Um, here's a tic-tac-toe one. And so in the tic-tac-toe one, they have to do the middle one and then they have to choose any other two boxes so that they get three in a row. And what's awesome is that this example has online and offline options. Sometimes we need to let students have a break. Sometimes they don't wanna be online. It's not a matter of can they be online, do they have the internet and the tool, but sometimes they just need a break. In which case, let them have that offline one. If you can't collect it, if you're doing remote, you can't touch for whatever reason, you can't get to the paper, have them take a picture of the paper and use that as evidence. Um, and so there's ways that we can go around offline tasks in an online distance learning environment. So that's what's kind of cool about this one. Um, just so you know that it's not just ones that are um, found online. So this is one that was used for a final project. Students had a choice to use a brain dump or find, um, utilize real life examples. So they had a choice here and they use, we use slides to do that. And so depending on what they clicked, they clicked option A, it would take them to the blue ones, and then they had to follow the instructions and then post it on the slide. And if they chose option B, okay, they would follow the instructions for option B and it would be here. If you're not familiar, if you're not, if you haven't made slides interactive um, where you've linked other slides within the presentation to a certain slide, um, seek me out, seek team DLS out or seek another person out because it's a really good tool when you're remote learning to be able to make more interactive slides, not just slides that you can only navigate one way in, but slides that link to other slides that have listening components, that have visual components, multimedia components. Um, here's another one. This one was just a choice kind of a decompression choice that they had, a science podcast. Okay, we're, we were working on our audio skills and processing um, audio listening and then comprehension. And so they had to choose what they listened to and complete a series of questions on it. But we had a choice on it. They only had to complete one on that one. So you, in some cases, you have to complete multiple. In some cases, you don't. Here's one. This is a common example found if you were to Google um, choice boards, choice menus um, for distance learning. Here's a common one that would come up. This one is a menu. They have to complete an entree, appetizer, um, side, they had to choose a dessert and a beverage. So they had to choose like one from each. Um, and so this is a way to kind of make it a little bit more fun. And there's other versions too. I've seen other ones do it with like game boards and stuff like that. So there's different ways that you can create choice boards. The sky's the limit. But as long as you're offering students choice in what activity they do.